Yeah, thank you so much, Rebecca, for giving us uh, this opportunity to share our experience in Fukushima. Uh, I discussed with uh, sorry, I discussed with Hiroko and uh, decided that uh, uh, I am originally from Tokyo and I'm an outsider. And uh, when the Great Eastern Japan earthquake happened, I was in Tokyo, and later I moved to Fukushima as an aid worker. And Hiroko is originally from Fukushima, Fukushima city, and he was, uh, she was there at that time. So I will talk about my experience as an outsider, and uh, she, uh, Hiroko will talk about uh, what happened in Fukushima inside at that time. Uh, in such way, we will uh, uh, take our uh, divide our road. Okay, uh, then uh, let me start uh, about my experience. Um, when the Great Eastern Japan earthquake happened in uh, 311 in 2011, uh, I was in Tokyo and I joined the uh, Disaster ta uh, Response Task Force of JANIC. Uh, JANIC is Japan NGO Center for International Cooperation. That is a, a network organization of uh, Japanese NGOs uh, working for international cooperation. So those, uh, that organization has a member NGOs and more than 100 NGOs are the member of JANIC. But those organizations are uh, usually working for uh, international cooperation, like uh, working in uh, Bangladesh, working in Cambodia, uh, working in Philippines. And usually they don't uh, respond to the disaster in, inside Japan. However, as the disaster of uh, in 2011, 311 is as huge. So many NGOs working for international cooperation decided to uh, go to the northeast Japan area to do the uh, to work for the affected people. And what happened that time is that uh, as the nuclear accident happened, followed by tsunami and the earthquake. Uh, many organizations uh, did not know how to do, how to uh, work in Fukushima. As um, many organizations, or oh, uh, not many, but uh, none of uh, organizations, uh, of member organizations in JANIC, uh, did have uh, experience in working in a, a radiation contaminated area. Uh, nuclear disaster is totally the first experience for us. So um, most of the NGOs uh, rushed to uh, other prefectures at, in, at that time. Three, open, three prefectures in northeast Japan are severely affected by tsunami and earthquake. Uh, that is Iwate Prefecture and Miyagi Prefecture and Fukushima Prefecture. Now, although Fukushima Prefecture is uh, closest to Tokyo, but most organizations rush to Iwate Prefecture and Miyagi Prefecture uh, where is uh, less affected by the nuclear accident. And uh, really less organization NGOs went to Fukushima. So um, we saw that situation and JANIC as a network organization, uh, we decided to set up an office, office in Fukushima and, and bridge the organizations uh, which can work in Fukushima and the, uh, the people in Fukushima. And, but uh, as we don't really know uh, what kind of risk 
is there uh, many um, um, some organizations uh, which is interested in working in Fukushima prefecture uh, decided that uh, we don't send young workers to Fukushima. We will send work uh, the people over 50 years old to Fukushima like that. So um, we needed some guideline for working in a area. However, um, uh, in, in inside Fukushima, um, the areas are not evenly contaminated. Uh, there are areas uh, uh, where highly contaminated and less contaminated, and the areas, the closest area to the nuclear uh, power plant, uh, is um, given the evacuation order by the government. So uh, after March 12, already uh, in exclusion zone, uh, there was no people. Uh, so uh, where we had to work for was the area uh, without evacuation order where people are still living. So uh, what happened at that time is that uh, the people in Fukushima are isolated. Uh, no many organizations at least, uh, come to support them. And uh, there were also discrim discrimination against people in Fukushima. And uh, they, uh, the people in Fukushima are treated as like a, like a very poor, helpless people uh, who, are, who had, has to live in contaminated area. And as the people in Japan, most of the uh, most of us didn't have um, knowledge about radiation, so at that time, many uh, people uh, believe believe or uh, uh, thinks that uh, radiation can a uh, transfer from people to people. Some people believe like that, and as we ha so uh, the situation was, we have to. Uh, no, and we have to study about radiation first. And um, JANIC, the organization I uh, belong to, uh, made a guideline called uh, JANIC Fukushima Radiation Guideline uh, and set a kind of limitation uh, according to uh, age and sex. Uh, how much radiation uh, exposure is permitted uh, for the workers. And after we made this, uh, other organization also uh, followed or uh, made their own guidelines and started working in Fukushima. And um, in Okay. Yeah, escape. Uh, uh, this is radiation guideline, and uh, you can find this in internet. But uh, if you are interested, maybe I can upload this in the reader list of oh. this forum. Yes, we made this when we didn't have much uh, knowledge about radiation at that time, but uh, so. Uh, if the experts see this, uh, maybe the opinions will be divided that this is appropriate or not. But we consulted with some experts uh, when we made this. Okay, uh, just skip it. Yeah. Uh, no. Yes, yeah, finish, finish. And I will show some other. Yes. And what we did after that is that uh, this is the uh, conference, uh, the 
called a global conference for nuclear power free world. Uh, mainly the peace board uh, is a uh, the leader of uh, is leading this uh, to open this uh, conference, but uh, some other organizations also joined to the committee uh, to uh, open this conference. Uh, this was held in uh, January 2012, so about 10 months after the, uh, nu the disa nuclear disaster. And um, about 100, hmm? I think about 10,000 people, 10,000 people joined, uh, participated to, in this conference and uh, not only the people from Japan but uh, uh, we invited uh, many activists from other countries and uh, from Chernobyl also and from Europe from America uh, and the United States and as Asian countries of course and uh, we discussed about uh, how we can uh, realize a nuclear power free world. And at that time, uh, we organized a tour for the visitors from outside Japan in Fukushima uh, to see the situation in Fukushima. And we um, uh, prepared an opportunity uh, to uh, uh, exchange between uh, visitors from outside Japan and uh, the pe local people in Fukushima. As uh, well, Fukushima Prefecture is uh, about uh, the, is a pre prefecture with about uh, two million uh, population, uh, but the local organizations uh, working for civil society is very limited. So. Uh, what we had to do is to bridge the uh, people uh, coming from outside to uh, work for the people in Fukushima and also the people who stand stand up uh, in inside Fukushima. Yeah, and this is also a picture of. Uh, Another uh, tour uh, we conducted uh, for for exchange from uh, outside uh, visitors and the people in Fukushima. This is in a temporary housing in uh, Kori town in Fukushima Prefecture. You can you can find uh, Mr. Uh, Akira Kawasaki, uh, who is a member of. Uh, Japanese member and uh, Rebecca's colleague in Japan, uh, in ICANN, and also Mr. Ohashi in the right side. Uh, ah. Yes, uh, he was a, a chairperson of JANIC at that ah. time. He was a, uh, my boss at that time. Ah. Yes, actually. Ah. <laughs> yes. Like this, uh, gradually the people are coming to visit Fukushima and to know the situation uh, and uh, still the communication, our communication continues. And uh, yeah, Ms. Kinchi, Professor Kinchi also visited us in 2012. Yes, 2012. Uh, and at that time, uh, uh, Mr. Vinod from India also visited. Yeah, and we uh, uh, guided them to the coastal area at that time. Yes, uh, such kind of work we uh, continued. Uh, and, uh, now eight years has passed. And one problem is that gradually, uh, when we conduct a tour, the visible things to show the if, uh, influence or impact of the disaster is decreasing. Mm -hmm. 
So if you see just uh, in a town of Fukushima city and even in a coastal area, maybe you will feel that uh, what happened? Uh, it's a, it's a almost ordinary uh, town, and it's it, it doesn't look like a disaster affected area. But if once you uh, measure the radiation level with a, your device, then you can find that there are some hot spot where radiation uh, level is high. And if you uh, interview people, then you will find that people uh, still their families are split, and their uh, children's generations are evacuated and still not returned, and their school are closed, and their life was. Uh, very much affected. Yes, um, yes, that is my exper experience in the early stage of uh, this eight years. Uh, now, um, eight years passed, and I have uh, we have uh, several challenges, uh, but uh, I think we will discuss about it later. Mm. <laughs> okay, thank you so much.